Now let's get into the Q&A. A lot of, I know there's a lot of questions about Masterworks and, of course, about electricity usage. So let's just jump right in, huh? All right. Q and A. Let me get out of the banner. Crypto golfer. Riot, of course, the Bitcoin mining operation here in Texas, made more money turning off their machines and selling the power back to the grid than from mining actually Bitcoin. That's actually true. I tried to find that article. I couldn't find it. So, again, when they talk about uh, this, this report, which says they're going to ban Bitcoin and mining operations, I don't think that's true. I think it's just, uh, it's just a, a push for this sector to move into renewables. That's just how it is. So that's what it, that's what it's going to take. It's what it's going to take. Not meme. Tons of energy used to mine gold. Very true. Uh, good, Rob. Hopefully we'll see the moonshots. I got to tell you guys, I mean, that report I felt was good. A lot of people felt it was not good. But uh, the market rallied when that report was put out. And that was yesterday, somewhere around the last 48 hours. And uh, Bitcoin went up, went up 10%. I think we're still up pretty well, matter of fact. Uh, unless something, who knows. In crypto, who knows? Maybe trying to ban Bitcoin money again or <laughs> something. No, we're still good. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, 0.2%. We haven't plummeted. Ethereum is doing well. Dang, let's look at those prices. Pretty good. But the question then is, uh, you know, what happens in, in the short term? I got to tell you, I don't, with the things that are going on, I don't see the market hitting all-time highs this year. Let's just say that. And uh, go from there. And uh, there's a lot of different macro events that could uh, change the outcome. But uh, for me, uh, I still think we got a, a long way to go before we hit another bull run. So that's all I will say. And uh, I'm still dollar cost averaging, just not as much as I used to, because I think there's a, a leg down. That's just me. I could be wrong, but wrong many times. That's my wife. All right. Crypto Keeper. The key is to take energy off the grid by replacing it with simple energy solutions. So we burn less energy for no reason. True. Geothermal over time drives costs down. Yes. It's like adding a heat pump. Makes it, again, exactly what, I was, what, it, exactly what we're saying. If uh, the report wants us to generate uh, energy and put it back to the grid, sure. And then we add to the grid. And then the, um, the demand from the regular use of electricity isn't so much. So sure. Michael. ESG is the biggest scam on earth. Probably so. Let's be honest. And of course, there was a report, I want to say Swiss Bank, Deutsche Bank, one of those two, where they were fudging the numbers for their, their, their ESG compliance. So I never believed it either. Uh, let's see. John, the solar power can be used to provide electricity to power the pumps to circulate the water and you go through a to keep the water. Seeming. Yeah, exactly. There it is. Uh, Amy, Amy Softball is here. Hello, family. Dig Swimming Dave said, I'm now into art. Thanks, Rob. That's good. There's some people who have questions about it, and rightfully so. And I think this is a good one for Masterworks. Hopefully, they're listening. And Lady uh, Melisandre says, I was about to invest in Masterworks with a tone of voice and attitude of, and she even gives the name, of Matt Mason, or whatever his name was, was kind of arrogant and rude, so I left it at that. Look, I'm not here to tell anybody their job, but... Uh, Try to be a little bit nicer to my uh, subscribers, please. Uh, Adam Lewis says, we'll, but there will be a correction. Take care, sell. Potentially. Who knows? Des? Hello, Des. Uh, Sean, what's crazy is there are a thousand, there's a thousand like cannabis grows a dime a dozen in this country. Every one of those suck up one gigawatt per month of their own. Hmm. Well, it's a good thing we're legalizing marijuana, huh? Uh, Brandon had the most comments, I think. Show me something that has these guys existing before we all just start hearing about them on YouTube. Same as Marja. It's a good question. So the thing I would recommend, go to the website, take a look at all the SEC filings, and you can see which ones, are, which ones they were initially uh, uh, put out, uh, which ones were sold, at what date and what time, and that's where it comes to transparency, which is why, I mean, when they approached me, I was like, I don't know. I don't know anything about art. Like, you don't need to because we do a lot of stuff. I'm like, well, I don't really trust you guys. Like, well, register with the SEC and you can look, read through all the filings. I'm like, I like that. So that's what I recommend. Lady, or, or is that something where you are stuck if Masterwork never sells the painting? It's a good question. So the question then, and I think Brandon had the same question, like what if the painting never sells? So 
There's a link in the description, Masterworks. We did a deep dive. They have a secondary market where if you want to sell your shares, I think it's after 12 months, uh, then you can sell your shares on their open market to somebody else who wants it. So again, remember, these are investments. And even though that uh, Alan talked about the sharp ratio, nothing's risk-free. Let's, I mean, I think we know that. So don't ever say to yourself, well, this is a guarantee. And I, I will never say that because it's, it's not the case. It's never just a guarantee. So for that one to say it is be, I, I will, I might be stuck with the painting. Well, you can always share your secondary sales. Could you lose money? Yes. So, you know, take a real deep look into this. And if this is what you want to do or not, uh, that guy says, who's the salesman? Oh, masterworks. I thought Alan did a good job. Uh, Brandon says, start a tropical fish business. Red flags, perhaps. Crypto golfer uh, had a diverse, how, it's hard to diversify when you're all in and underwater. It's true. It's hard, to, it's hard to actually buy crypto these days after the things that we went through, right? We all went through. If you're here, you're not a tourist, like I always talk about. If you went through 2021, a lot of you, just guessing, maybe you thought to yourself, man, maybe I should have sold a little more crypto. Maybe I shouldn't have left it all on, on some exchanges. Maybe I should have took those off. Maybe I should have, maybe, maybe, maybe this, right? So when we get to this point, we've gone through, I mean, the market is, has uh, decreased by over 80% in some cryptos. Uh, Bitcoin's down 70%, 71% from the all-time highs. Uh, we've taken a look at rug pulls. We've taken a look at hacks. We've taken a look at insolvency issues with Celsius and Voyager. And the list just goes on and on. So if you're here right now, it is hard. I get it. That is life, unfortunately. That is just the truth and that's just how it is. So the question you have to ask yourself is, what am I going to do with this? Am I going to sit back and cry about it and say, you know what? I'm never going to get farther or am I going to do something about it? Here's the thing. I was the same position in 2017 when I saw my portfolio. Not the exact same, I must admit. I just held on to my, my portfolio. I said, well, I'm down 90%. Is it going to get worse than this? Probably. I'm just going to keep dollar cost averaging and go to the next one. And then I swore to myself I would actually sell and stop listening to all the people that kept saying diamond hands, which was the stupidest thing I ever heard. And at that point in 2021, I did sell. Did I sell as much as I should have? No, because I got greedy. And those are the things I will work on for the next bull market. So just hang around. If you don't like the price, it'll change. Good question, golfer. Uh, what happened to plan B? That's a good question. I don't know what happened to plan B. Uh, Lady Melisandre says, I would have invested, but I did not like getting talked down to. Yeah, we talked about that. Des, nothing's 100% safe and secure. Do your own research. Jeff says, how do you get a, re a wrench? Let's start handing out wrenches. Let's see. Let me, uh, hold on, pause this. Okay. Let me share my screen. That's the wrong screen. That's also the wrong screen. Oh, this is why. Ah, here it goes. Sorry about that. Let me do this again. <laughs> All right. So here we are. How do you get a wrench? Where is the, uh, where is my live chat? Come up. It's going to take a second. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll come up in a second. Once it does, I'll let everybody know and I'll start handing out some wrenches. Always fun times. All right. Brandon says, so buy your fractional shares of art. We'll never see and hold them with you as long as possible, as long as possible. And you accumulate shareholders. And this isn't a Ponzi house. So you have to understand. So what is a Ponzi scheme, right? Ponzi scheme is the, the funds that you have. You're only paying back people from the new people, right? That would be a Ponzi scheme. But if you, let's just say, for example, well, let's see, actually. Let me show you something. Da, 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 da. Ah, here we go. So, ba, 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 ba. so here's the last four pieces of art that they sold. I don't know exactly how much they sold for, but the annualized return was 32% on a Banksy, 31% on Condo, 33% on Olin, or these people are, and another one on Brown. Obviously, you can tell I'm not versed in uh, art. 
So if you bought into this, let's say you put in a thousand dollars, right? And then you waited for the year, two years or however long it takes and year over year. So let's say a thousand. So 30% year over year. So, they're in. so let's say then of course that they sell at 32% higher year over year, 66%, 64%, whatever it is. So now you're up 1,600 something dollars, right? Now there's going to be fees along with that. I understand. But that's, a, that's not a Ponzi. A Ponzi is we just take the money in, we do absolutely nothing and just roll, roll into the next person that comes in. So they buy art and they wait, like Alan talked about, three to, to seven years. It's a long time. but And then you don't do anything. And you just hold on to it. It's registered with the SEC and then they sell it at some point. And of course, could you, again, could you lose everything? Sure. You could lose everything. Uh, the painting could not sell for some reason, or they could sell at a loss. That is true. It's very true. So again, it's all what you want to do. However, they've been doing pretty good so far. Not financial advice, but I've done it myself. It's okay for now. But could I lose it? Sure. And let's see. Brandon again. What happens if the amount of users acquired and money put in outstrips the value of the art you have in hand? Well, then you lose money. What happens if there's a sudden crash in the art market? Well, there's a sudden crash in the art market. It's the same thing with our market, right? If there's a sudden crash in our market. Are we going to sell immediately? Some will. I don't think that's not a... <sighs> Depends on your time horizon, right? If uh, the market crashes and for some reason you're like, I need a kidney transplant. Well, if you need money, you need money. And then uh, off you go. But usually, like if I see, like me personally, when I see dips, I'm like, hmm, this is a good opportunity to to buy a little bit more. Or maybe I just sit on the sidelines and don't do anything and just wait for it to come back up. It's a great thing when you have time. And that's what it comes down to. So I hope that answered most of the questions. Brutal. But you gotta answer the tough questions because if not, you know. <laughs> okay, did this come back yet finally? Ah, great. Let's get some, let's get some wrenches, huh? Here we go, finally. Tesla's got a wrench. CryptoCube has been here for a long time. Congratulations. Let's add as a moderator. Amy Benimer, blah, 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 blah. Dave Jensen. Darth Mike. <laughs> Brandon's been here for a long time. Even though he had some tough questions, he is now a moderator. Look at that. Oh, Amy's not a... Moderator yet. Look at that. Well, everybody's having a great day today. And then, who was this? Amy Benimatarjager. Bid moon next time. Uh, thought, I'll answer the thoughts on Charles Hoskins in a bit. Well, I don't know where she went. Am I missing it? Ah, Corey, good question. You're a moderator. I'll get to the Benimeter Scherzer when I find it. Uh, the question is, how long have you been working with Masterworks? Uh, well, I bought it uh, in October. Uh, then the affiliate links. I bought in October, waited a couple months, then I added the affiliate links in the description. So uh, seven months, eight months, somewhere around there, working together. And remember, Everything in the description are all affiliate links. I think, I hope everybody knows that. Actually, I labeled them now all affiliate links. So just so you know, you don't have to use those affiliate links. It's okay. I won't be hurt. If you want to just go right to Masterworks, go right to Masterworks. But if you use the affiliate link, you get to skip the wait list. Same thing with, uh, with iTrust. I think they give you like $100 when you open up a Roth IRA. Same thing with like the exchanges. Like if you're looking to open up like with Coinbase, Actually, no, Coinbase doesn't give me anything. Forget that. Uh, FTX, uh, I don't know. There's something else I have in there. Oh, yeah, the uh, tax software. So you can just go to the website. doesn't matter. Whatever you want to do. Now, let's see. And art over time has proven a viable investment. I never really trusted it because I'm like, I don't understand why anybody would, would get into it. But then I saw the numbers. I'm like, oh, I get it now because rich people are crazy. There was a... There was a Banksy that, remember that Banksy that got shredded? I always talk about this. That was like 1.4 million. Then after it got shredded, it was like 20, 23.8 million that it sold for. 
Why? Because it is. I don't know, guys. I don't know. My, that's not my job. Mm, 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 mm. Not me. Not me, you're already one. Ben and Mortasia. Okay, there you are. You got a wrench. And that will conclude it for today. There's a lot of this whole, I got to tell you, with great power comes great responsibility. Don't, uh, here's what I just say. If like somebody's got a bunch of questions, don't stop them from asking questions. If somebody's being, uh, you know, like super disrespectful and cussing, then yeah, you can put them in timeout. I don't like to ban anybody. I don't like to ban anybody at all. Unless they're obvious bots, what they're talking about. Invest into blah, blah, blah. And Magnolia is the best, whatever. But besides that, uh, just let things go in the chats. And that's it. Cool. Thanks, guys. So this one is a good question. How do you choose the art that you invested in for Massworks? I signed up, but don't know how to tell what big was it. So what I did was I sat down with the guys for like 30 minutes. And I said, this is my goal. This is what I want to do. And then they just kind of did the same thing with you if you want to walk through it. The first time I was like, the offerings were like, I don't really know. And it doesn't make sense to me. So I just did, didn't do it. And then uh, like two or three weeks later, I came back. I'm like, you know what? I'll, I'll do it. And what do you guys have to offer? They, there was like four or five different offerings. And I just took a look at, well, you know, they didn't have the sharp ratio back then. So if I would have known about the, if they would have the sharp ratio like we talked about as far as that risk versus reward, I would have definitely just taken a look at that and go, give me the, the one with the highest sharp ratio because I want the biggest, like Alan said, the biggest bang for my buck and just go down that route. But they didn't have it. So I just looked at the potential APY and just went with that because I'm greedy. All right. Corey, I don't know what, um, it's definitely something I'm looking into, something an awesome opportunity, a little skeptical, but hey, it's healthy. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I only banned Beardy for pumping EOS. I'm telling you guys, in 2017, EOS was, was everything. It was the next ETH killer. And that was it. Uh, yeah, and... Thanks to Shreva's mental, just shows you how it doesn't make sense. And the less sense, the more of a statement, and the less more worthy, oddly. Sure. That's a good question. Jose says, please check the XMR, uh, the Monero Bitcoin graph for the last 12 months. Very atypical for any other crypto I could find. What do you think? I'll take a look at it. Go from there. If they shut down mining operations, does it mean that Bitcoin supply will decrease? And the price should go up with the same. No, that's not what it does. So remember, and I'm not a miner, but correct me in the comments for the people that do mine. But the supply is set. I think we're at 6.25, somewhere around there. 50, 25, 12, 6 point, somewhere around there. So every 10 minutes, miners get uh, uh, their uh, 6.25 of uh, Bitcoin. I think that's what it is. The next one will be 3.17 or something like that. So anyhow, it doesn't matter. So if you have, let's say, to keep it simple, you have a 1,000 Bitcoin miners, and they're all just chugging along, taking electricity, trying to find the hash rate, or you know, getting the hash rate up and high, the difficulty level adjusts. And of course, then they have to put in more computational power. That's a lot more electricity. That's why they need these, uh, these big, enormous rigs, and they have to be faster and everything else. But then if the electricity starts to be too expensive, out of those 1,000 Bitcoin miners, and they say, let's say half of them say, well, I'm in Ireland, or I'm in the UK, or whatever else, and it's 10x more expensive to run this Bitcoin miner. It's not profitable. I'm going to shut down. So they shut down. Now you have 500 Bitcoin miners. They still secure the network. They still do the mining. And uh, of course, the difficulty drops way off. So they don't have to use near as much electricity as the others would have had to as you had 1,000 or 10,000 or 100,000 Bitcoin miners in operation. So uh, that's really what it comes down to. And as far as like uh, the price decrease in the same demand, it should be the same everything around as far as electricity. What does affect the price is when there's a massive sell-off. And uh, that's, we can take a look at the crypto quant charts for the Bitcoin miners as far as they, as much as they sell off. 
And you can take it. I'll show it to you right now because it makes no sense if I'm talking about it. I don't show you. Dashboard. I'll, I'll show it to you in a second. Let me just log in. I thought it'd be interesting. Oh, yeah, here it is. So let me take a look at on-chain analysis, the Bitcoin miner outflow. Let's blow this up. These are everything is, because uh, remember, miners have to keep the lights on. So that means that they have to sell Bitcoin. That's their, that's pretty much their whole thing, right? In the last, oh, what, eight months or so, six, seven months, we've seen big outflows around here. Gosh, 8,000, almost, almost 9,000 uh, Bitcoin in total. And then in June, Another one in June, and then we've been pretty stable for quite some time. So uh, it's okay. And some people tell me that uh, in different reports, they say that as far as like a mass sell-off, it's still profitable to to mine Bitcoin even at if you know Bitcoin is three thousand eight hundred dollars or higher. I've heard different reports. Sometimes some say it's around eight thousand. Some say it's three thousand. I really can't get a straight answer. But really, it comes down to is how much electricity area do you have to use. Because if you have to use 8000 like let's just say $8,000 worth of electricity to mine one Bitcoin, uh, what's the point of keeping the rigs on? So hope that makes sense. And of course, correct me in the comment section. Comments. Yeah. Yeah, it's just easier to mine Bitcoin, less competition. That's true. What? Hmm. Didn't know this. Santino Ramos says, uh, the Antelope upgrade for EOS is days away. Block one will no longer be in control. The community and the EOS Foundation upgraded tech, crushing NFTs between EOS chains plus EVM. Ethereum virtual machine operability. Oh, okay. Maybe that could be the big thing. Rob, your thumbnail has your hand and wrist the same size as your head. That'd be pretty tough because I got a big head. Let's see. Bitcoin prices, premium inflation could be. Yes. Do you ever forget yourself on a hot day and dive right into your green screen? I turn around and run right into that green screen. It's very refreshing. And guys, that's it. It's uh, over an hour now. So look. Go enjoy the Saturday. First of all, thanks for hanging around with me. I appreciate it. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe. Maybe YouTube will actually notify you. Who knows? But that's it. So thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one. Adios.